Hi, this is Cycle 2, Week 20 Science, Straw Bridge Construction. Uh, your most important job as a tutor this week is to make sure that your students don't build any highways to hell. But that shouldn't be too hard. We are a Christian-based uh, group. This is a really good week. This is a good uh, demonstration. This is good hands-on activity um, that your students um, can do. You do need to do a little bit of prep work. You may want to do a little bit of practice um, at home. <clears throat> You'll need to bring um, something to, to make a, a bridge with. There's lots of different kinds of bridges. What I, I would recommend that you uh, construct in class is a, a relatively straightforward and a simple bridge. Um, but you, you may want to research a little bit about truss bridges. Uh, truss bridges are certainly the most common uh, type of bridge. Uh, truss, bri truss bridges are primarily made using um, triangles, and, and they're made in, in such a way that the entire, although it's composed of individual triangles, the entire thing behaves really as one unit and provides and distributes the, the, the weight um, throughout the entire bridge. That's why they're so strong. Um, it is pretty advanced to make a truss bridge, but there's certainly good instructions on the internet. There are, um, there are engineering competitions that are, are for, for middle school kids, for high school kids, for collegiate level uh, students, all who, who try to build the strongest truss bridge imaginable. And some of them are crazy. Uh, and so um, there, there's lots of opportunities for you to incorporate that in uh, to, to your week. But if you have really advanced kids and you want to let them try to make some truss bridges, then I would bring a pattern um, for them so that they can try to, to build from it. It's not something that I think they would be able to intuitively do um, very, very easily or very quickly unless they've built one maybe um, in the past. And it will also take a long time. Uh, the materials that are suggested in the foundations guide are um, straws and rubber bands, Play-Doh or tape <clears throat> as an option for younger students, for the ABC Darians. Maybe um, you could use um, little marshmallows and uh, toothpicks. That would be a good option as well. We could talk more about some of those kinds of things. I think all of those are, are good options. I think using rubber bands to hold uh, the straws together is, is kind of tricky. I think it's hard. The problem you, you get into um, with that, so, so here's just an example, one, one straw. Um, when, when you're building your bridges, if you're using rubber bands and you have multiple straws together, you don't want them to be bunched together by the tension of the rubber band. They need to, to be able to basically lay flat as a unit. And I think that's kind of hard to do. And, and it will depend a lot on the tension of the rubber bands. And so um, my advice would be to use um, tape. I, I suggest um, just regular masking tape uh, works very well. Um, other, other kinds of tape like scotch tape or clear tape um, certainly would work also. But those are, um, are, are the tools um, that you will need. Okay, so then to start, to start uh, this week's discussion, I would uh, take a straw. <clears throat> I would hold up, I would ask the kids, what is it? It's a straw. What do we see? It's a straw. Tell the students, we're going to build a bridge with this straw. When we think about how bridges are made, um, different bridges can support different masses or different weights or different loads. What kinds of things determine how heavy an object the bridge can support? I think that's a great question, especially for your older kids. Um, I don't know what kinds of, uh, of answers um, you would get. Um, I don't know that they will have thought about it a lot, but you could start that, that ball rolling. What kinds of things determine how uh, much of a load a bridge can support? If you're not getting anywhere, then if you have access to one, I suggest you, you bring in a brick or another object that's very, very solid. So let's ask the students this question. If I make a bridge out of bricks or straws, which bridge is stronger? I think now they'll start to, well, I think they will say the, the, the brick bridge, right? And you can lead them to this idea that, that the reason the brick bridge is stronger is because, um, uh, uh, compared to the straw bridge, is, is because of the inherent material itself. Can I bend this? Can I break it? Certainly not with my hands. If I had some tools, I, I could break it. What about, what about the straw? Can I bend it? Can I break it? Easily, right? I, I can bend it in half easily. So you want to start with this idea that part of what makes bridges uh, work well is the material itself that they're made out of, right? <clears throat> and the, prop the inherent properties of the bridge, but there's more to it than that. And that's what we really want to guide our students to see. And so what we want to help the students see is that not just the, the, what the material is made of is important, but it also matters how the material is arranged. And that's the secret of a truss bridge, right? It's built in a very specific way so that the compression 
um, and, and the tension are, are balanced so that the shear forces acting on the bridge are, are, are taken care of. <clears throat> Again, that's probably more complicated than what we can do today, but maybe ask the kids, okay, so if you have one straw, you don't have a whole lot of options for a bridge. I suggest a couple of books is what, is what I would get up, uh, bring to class, and, and I would set up. The higher from the surface that the kids are working, the more dramatic any falls. <laughs> so take that into consideration. Um, but I think it also kind of makes it more fun. It makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, the, these straws are about five and a half inches wide. So I would, I would set up my first straw bridge so that it's probably going to be difficult to see on this video, but I'm over I'm overlapping the end of the straw very 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 tiny with with the structure here that's that's actually supporting it, uh, and so we can we can ask the kids you know how strong is this bridge, you know what could could this bridge support, I mean it could support you know a series of ants I mean there are certainly things that it could support right very small but even <clears throat> it would be um, it would be difficult to imagine it supporting much of any weight at, at all uh, because it's by itself. But what if I gave you, let's say, four of these? Can you make a better bridge? Guide the students to this understanding of, well, if I arrange the straws differently, I might be able to increase the strength uh, of the bridge. I think the first and the, and the simplest um, bridge that they might uh, envision constructing is just four pieces together, just like this. Okay, and so again, uh, my point earlier about using the rubber bands, if I, if I, lay, if I lay this the, the straw on my hand, it really will lay relatively uh, flat. It's not bunched together. There's really no, no, no pressure. And so <clears throat> that helps. So I could build a bridge like that, for example. Now, how do we want to test our bridges? We want to test our bridges to see what load that they can support in, in, in a, a general way. I, I think a good and easy way to do it is to bring money uh, with you to class. I would bring some pennies and I would bring some quarters. Um, I got out a, a little scale and was sort of experimenting around with spare change at home. 10 pennies is about one ounce from what I can tell and somewhere between $2.25 and $2.75 in quarters is about two ounces. So that gives you kind of a, a ballpark. So if I take if I take this bridge here, and I, I, you can have the students construct, each student um, or a pair of students maybe can construct the bridge, and now we can put onto it our pennies. You have to have a steady hand. All right, so I've got three pennies. This is an addition of four pennies, which would make seven total. We're just doing okay. I could put three more, one, two. Put three more pennies to get a full ounce onto my bridge. It's doing just fine. I have four straws side by side. I have a few extra pennies. Let's see, I have uh, five additional pennies, 15 pennies. There we go. Okay. A bridge can support 15, uh, 15 pennies with four straws. What if I gave the students, what if you gave the students more straws? What else could they do? Is there another way that they could arrange the straws, building on the principle uh, that it's not just the material itself that determines the load that the bridge, but it's how it's arranged. Well, what if, what if instead of four straws, what if I gave you eight straws? What would you do? I don't know what the students uh, will say. They, they might stack two sets of four straws together. That may be difficult to see on our on the video, but take my word for it. There's eight straws here. So if we were to put four straws together, then if we were going to make our comparison with the 15 pennies, it's a subtle comparison, maybe a little more difficult for the students to see. So what's the difference? Both bridges are able to support 15 pennies, but the displacement in the middle of the bridge when I have only four straws lined up here is a lot higher. The displacement this way is, is a lot higher, right, than, than if I was doing that. Is this the only way that I could arrange eight straws? No, there's, there's lots of different ways. What if my straws were of different lengths? What if the straws were of different lengths? What would you do? What options um, would you have? <clears throat> it might take a little bit of guidance on your part as the tutor to bring the students to understand, but if I, I make, so I've got here four short pink straws, 
um, that are not the same size as the other straws. And so if I want to build a bridge like this, or, or sorry, if I'm building a bridge with this, with this arrangement, uh, another strong arrangement is to brace the, the middle point of the bridge in that manner. So by putting those four straws um, across. Can we can we hold fifteen pennies this way? Now becomes the question. Oops. Yes, we can. And the displacement again is much less. the The displacement in this direction is less with this particular arrangement uh, of the bridge and, and the straws. <clears throat> so there, there's lots of different ways that the students could arrange the bridge. Again, these are very simple. <laughs> designs. <laughs> These are very simple um, designs uh, for for the bridge, but I, but it illustrates the point that you wish to to make to the students. To me, are are two that um, that bridges uh, the load that a bridge can support is determined in part by the material that the bridge itself is made out of. I think that that's kind of an intuitive idea. Stronger materials, materials that are are, are have higher loads. However. It's also important how you arrange the pieces of your bridge. The truss bridge is the ultimate example of that. Super light weight bridges, the mass of the bridge itself is small, but it's able to support a very, very heavy load. Um, and you can, and again, some of the students could build truss bridges. There, there's, there's resources if that's what you want to do. But another option, um, and, and what I would encourage you to start with, whether you want to build a truss bridge or not, I would suggest you start having your students arrange um, straws in, in, in simple patterns with in sets of either four or even three um, and, and get the pieces um, across so that they can begin to understand um, how bridges are made and, and, and how the, the arrangement of the structure um, is very, very important in, in the overall performance of the bridge. I, I think money <clears throat> is a good way in order to, to demonstrate a, a sort of the strength of the bridge and to test it, but you could do other things. You could, you could, you could balance rocks. The trick in some sense is to get the to get it balanced as opposed to the structure of the bridge. Um, the, the ideal option, I think, would be to create a container on your bridge that you could then add sand to uh, or something to to change the mass over time. So the students could construct a bridge like, like for example, this is a, a Classical Conversations pencil holder box. Right? Now I've got pencils in here at the moment. But we could imagine if we could balance our pencil holder box, which we can. Now it'd be difficult to now add the weight without disrupting that balance, but you could, the students could, could add weight, take it off, or take it off, add the weight, put it back on and see how heavy it, it could go. That, I think that might be a, a, a nice way um, to do it, but again, it requires a little bit of manipulation. Um, so something like that is kind of, I think, the ultimate. But uh, again, the bottom line is that um, it's easy to construct uh, a bridge that's relatively simple, uh, and it's a bridge that, that that's relatively sturdy. I mean, e even with just four straws, w we can make a bridge that, um, it, it, with with the proper um, support, that, that you could shake it all night long, and nothing would fall off of uh, the bridge. And more than anything, by, by testing our bridges with the quarters and with the pennies, um, we're just reminded of the fundamental truth that money talks. This is a fun experiment, and I hope that you and your kids will enjoy it together. This is Cycle 2, Week 20 Science.